You're listening to the Walt Weekly Podcast with our host, Walter Latham, and our co-host, Michelle Sweeney McCombs. Voices in society impacting the culture. Welcome to another episode of the Walt Weekly Podcast Live. My name is Walter Latham. I am your host, and I'm joined by your co-host, Michelle Sweeney McCombs. And before we start, we would just like to extend our sincere thanks for the ongoing support that we've been getting. We're growing, and I appreciate that. Couldn't do that without y'all guys. And for those who are joining us for the first time, please follow, like, and share our podcast, which will be on the all the platforms. Wherever you get your podcast, you'll be able to get this show. And that'll be, and we broadcast, when is it? Uh, Every Sunday after 3 p.m. We yes. do a rebroadcast at a live show, right, Michelle? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And Michelle is our moderator. She be she will be moderating the chat box. And uh, we'll try to get to any comments or questions that y'all guys got. All right, this week's show. You know, I got gut what the F is going on in the I mean, are we in a reality when we in some type of nightmare? I, I you know, I don't get it. You know. That's when we think that we are, we are on a path forward, you know, with the election and Biden is picking his cabinet and all this kind of stuff. People just won't change. They won't try to change. You know, and I, I'm, you know, I mean, the inference here is, is the Republicans and the people that don't want to wear a mask. So we got a lot of topics that we want to talk about, you know, especially COVID being at the top of the list because that's life and death. All right. Because we got, we pushing 16 million people infected. So far, and we're doing over three thousand, close to three thousand deaths a day. So the topics we're going to cover today, of course, is going to be COVID, uh, the Trump slash Texas uh, appeal to the Supreme Court to overthrow the four states' res- election results, Georgia, you know, the, uh, for the Senate, the Senate election down there, and the vaccines, and the arrest of the NFAC leader. Okay, mm-hmm. down in Alabama. Uh, was that Alabama, I believe? But anyway, we'll get to that. And Staten Island, of course, we got to bring it home. Okay, so um, let me turn it over to Michelle because otherwise I'll start getting into the details. But Michelle, how you doing? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you, Walter. Thanks for that nice intro. Today's Friday Live is sponsored by Women Black Owned Businesses. First up is Beauty Blends by Ami of All Natural and Organic Products. Available now for holiday gift sets featuring butter, body butter flavors, red velvet, cheesecake, Christmas spice, mint chocolate chip, and candy yams. Beauty Blends also carries a men's collection of beard oils and more. You can get 15% off with a discount code, The Walt Weekly, with a $25 or more purchase. Our next sponsor is Soap and Love, a handmade, all-natural vegan soap company. Now available as a limited edition Pumpkin pie soap. You can also save with discount code the Walt Weekly 10% at checkout. I will post all of their information in the chat room. Today's panel, we have an amazing panel today. We have Gregory Coleman out of North Carolina. He's the CEO of Illumination Media and Technology. We also have Christopher Sweeney out of New Jersey, a retired New York sanitation worker and CEO of Johnny Roos Catering. Our next uh, panel is Ernest J. Robinson out of Washington, D.C. He's a sergeant in the U.S. A sergeant in the U.S. Marine Corps, combat veteran. He's a senior consultant at B. Ernest Leadership and Professional Consulting. Our next panel is uh, Monique Lauderdale out of New York City. She's a retired New York City Housing Authority property manager, a former director of Raising Grace Scholarship Fund, and also a community theater actor. I will post all of their hashtags, yes, their websites, everything will be posted in the chat room. Welcome, welcome panel. We appreciate you guys being on tonight. Walter, you can take over. Yes, thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thanks everybody for joining. And we'd like to thank our sponsors again. Uh, So let's get down to business, okay? All right, the first thing I wanna talk about is Trump's appeal to the Supreme Court. All right. And where we are, what do y'all guys think about it? 
you know, I think uh, the AG from Texas, which I was worried about this anyway. I'm still worried, as I said earlier, you know, I'm a little stressed out about it. The AG and Trump uh, have a case pending before the Supreme Court to basically throw out the vote for Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, Georgia, but the four states that uh, Biden won, which were battleground states. So same day, the battleground states. And they want to throw out those votes. Okay. Now, I'm going to direct the first one. Let me, let me just ask uh, Chris. Well, what are your thoughts on this thing, Chris? Uh, I wanted to say it was desperate, right? But it just keeps going. And they keep finding these little loopholes and these tricks that they're pulling. And I'm a little concerned, as you are, Walter. I think uh, there's something going on here. You know, um, for this many Congress congressmen and women to sign on to this petition, it it, it tells me that we're going to have four more years of what we just experienced, even if we even if Biden goes in, you know, in the Supreme Court, ignores this as they should. They shouldn't even be involved in this and it shouldn't even gotten. It's just the most frivolous uh, case to be brought in front of them. It just makes absolutely no sense. It has no teeth. And um, for it to even make it this far, is, it's just disappointing. It really is disappointing. Yeah. yeah. I hear somebody writing and I'm scratching. I'm getting some background noise, but it's good. We're live and, and, and that's going to happen. Uh, yeah, Chris, I, you know, I agree with you. Uh, but it seems like the Supreme Court is, you know, they're not as quick as they were with the, the lawsuit from last week where they just said, uh, no, we're not even going to entertain the idea, basically, you know, and, and that's not even a paraphrase. That's that just, you know, just an interpretation of what they said. It was a one liner almost. You know, we're not going to hear this. It's nonsense. But I'm not I'm not getting that, that feel here. And then right. when does Neither one state do other states over something like this. There's no precedent. I mean, water rights and stuff like that. That's what states sue each other over, you know, ownership. But it's so another state over their procedure or process, that's unheard of. So I don't see any any case here myself. But, you know, we have to uh, see what happens. Anything can happen in this, this reality that we live in. You know, it's strange, strange times. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, Ernest, well, what's your take on this? Yeah. No, nah, so um, as it relates to it, there, no, to your point, you're right. There is no precedent that is set. Um, but what it is setting up is the support of Trump for those Republicans within those states that they have. I think mean, right now there's over over 120 that have signed on um, to this appeal to the Supreme Court. And Trump right now has, you know, again, there are 74 million people in this country who supported and voted uh, for him. And so, and what, and what I want everyone to be clear about, and even some of the pundits on, on uh, um, whether on the right or the left, uh, everyone who voted for Trump wasn't a Republican, and everyone who voted against them wasn't a Democrat. And so I want that to be clear, you know, saying as well, there are individuals who made whatever decision that they made, and we don't really even know what that is. But these uh, members of Congress are are breaking the ties when it comes down to the, the, the principles of the United States of America. But this has been reflected back during the Civil War. You know, we have people who are elected to uphold the Constitution. They use the Constitution to be able to support things like slavery, to support Jim Crow, to support the Reconstruction. So, I mean, there, there's a number of things that people who have perverted the principles and the basis of the United States. Yeah, but, you know, the thing is that, that uh, Trump sent a letter uh, to these congressmen saying that they should sign a letter supporting this effort at the Supreme Court. And he wants to see who who signed and who did not sign. So, well, 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 well the, 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 the way that it started, I mean, obviously, when it started from the AG and one of the members of Congress actually sent the letter. Um, it, it's a um, 
it's a uh, I forgot there's a, a terminology that, that we have for it. Um, it's a colleague's letter um, that, that they, everyone signs on. And then, yeah, to your point, yes, he wants to see that list. So that way he can sit there and say, OK, I'm going to support you when you run for office or I'm going to put the money behind somebody else. Because also to everyone who's listening, um, that all this money that he's raising, 75 percent of it or 75 cents for every dollar, he can do whatever he wants to do with it. Only twenty-five cents is actually twenty-five cents of every dollar is actually going towards his legal fund. So he has a large monetary cachet of funds to being able to do whatever he wants to do over the next couple of years, and that's writing checks to support someone else's candidacy, ads, or support his own candidacy in twenty twenty-four if he so chooses. Okay, okay, Monique, would you like to uh, chime in on that? Yeah, I basically agree with everything everyone else said. The bottom line is we have to wait to see what the um, Supreme Court says, if they're going to actually hear, um, if they're going to hear the legal arguments um, at all, they may just say you don't have a basis, which is what they've been saying right. to all the other 40 plus lawsuits that they that they've tried to um, bring forth to the Supreme Court. So, you know, we, it's just basically a wait and see. You know, of course, it's preposterous. We all know that they're basically right. just throwing away the rule of law and, and um, you know, democracy in this country. And it's okay when they do it, you know, because they want to keep their man in office. So I'm glad you said it like that, because to me, it, it, it smacks of, like, privilege. You know, we of don't course. care what the, what the rules are. We made the rules, so therefore we can change the rules. You know, exactly. that's, that's the impression I get. Exactly. Exactly. That's true. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the, the damage to the country. I don't know what the aftermath of something like this would be if they managed to do that. Can, well, I mean, well, one, I, well, one I, don't, I don't think, I don't see that happening. Um, and I think to... Um, I, I, I think to Nikki's point was that the, the the Supreme Court is able to stand on the Constitution and being able to dismiss this um, with prejudice or without, right? But I right. think what what may end up happening is that when it does get dis dismissed, that there will be a dissent to being able to actually detail why that this is one, unconstitutional, unethical, dang near illegal for it, for it to happen. And to your point, what the ramifications could be moving forward, that any state does, that doesn't like what another state is doing can sue them for anything, which is ironic because the actual stimulus package that's being held up is being held up because the Republicans want to put a protection from uh, employers who, who began in during COVID to have a protection from litigation from their employees. And so you, you want to open it up for states to be able to litigate another state, but you want to be able to protect small businesses from employees from litigation. The, the level of irony, I, I'm not even sure if they even can capture that. Yeah, I mean, the, the reality of it I mean, I mean, just 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 the the logic and the rationale behind it doesn't make sense. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's an upside down world. We've been living in it. We've been doing since we've been doing this show. It's just been, you know, it, it's a perception issue. You know, one side to the you know to the other. I mean, I just don't get it. But you know, well, yeah. Go ahead, Chris. Greg. I just want to add something. It's just a strong reminder that "Make America Great" wasn't just a saying. And they want to go back to the way it was 40, 50 years ago. And it's not just a saying. It's not something that, you know, was a slogan. This is actively, they are actively, you know, doing this. They're trying to bring it back 50 years. And they are, they are actually making headway to, to, to be at this point at the Supreme Court with this foolishness says a lot. Yeah, it does. It does. 
But then again, you know, you got half the country that's that, you know, more a little bit more than half. I mean, look, Biden won by seven, eight million votes. Okay, so we're talking basically a split right down the middle in the country, which sets it up a, a stage wherein we had a civil war. That's basically what you know. That's basically what we're looking at, because it's not just you know for minority. I mean, this is right down the middle, you know. And what are we going to do? We're a split country, so it was a very dangerous thing to do at this time. And I think, and this is only my opinion, and, and I'm drawing conclusions based on on what I what I've read and what I understand, uh, is that what they're doing is sedition. It's against the mm-hmm. Constitution. Why All right. Do it? Okay. So anyway. That that that's you know the Walt Weekly's opinion on this is it's sedition and I think somebody should pay for it, the attempt. All right, and that 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 should be a legal thing. There should be some some legal uh, ramifications, you know, for what they're trying to do. Well, the, the the legal ramification for it is the, at the poll. I mean, and 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 I, I'll say this every time that we get on. This is the reason why voter education and registration and mobilization is so important each and every year, not just during presidential election. And I think that one thing that's being showcased right now, they're showing how important, one, that the presidential election is, but two, how important those off-year elections are going to be, which is part of the reason why many of those members had signed on. Because although they may not necessarily agree with uh, what the president is currently doing, they know that it's going to have an impact on them being able to win their primary that's getting ready to come up in the next couple of months. So despite the fact that there's going to be an inauguration on January 20th, there is still going to, New Hampshire is going to, uh, I think they run their uh, um, uh, um, primary election in the very beginning of January. And then, there's, and then there's 15 states to 20 states that does it between February and March. So they are there is um elections have consequences and they and they but know what it is and so i think it's important for us to be able to realize that as well okay but if they get to move this needle like they're trying to do then going to the poll absolutely means nothing if they're successful and even in the slightest way with this foolishness that they're doing it renders your vote worthless Right. I mean, that, that's the way it's going to be interpreted, especially with all the new voters that we got, the young people. They're going to be disenchanted. I mean, it, this is a this is a very exactly. bad thing. So, I mean, I hope the Supreme Court takes that into consideration. If we want to remain a democracy, then they should take that into consideration. And that, that's, that's why I, I, I truly, truly believe that, that they won't. And that I, I believe that they, they won't entertain this. Uh, well, one, I think they're entertaining it long enough because I think to, to Michelle's point or to Nikki's point, that they, they did this way faster earlier um, w- with the last um, lit- litigation that, that went through. So they're entertaining it long enough, but I don't believe that's going to m- make it any further than the submission. Okay, okay. I mean, how do, how do you guys think this is going to impact? And I'm a moving, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to see a, a correlation between what's going on with the Supreme Court case and the Georgia Senate elections that are coming up next month? Y'all, do y'all guys see a downside in terms of uh, voter participation in, in Georgia as they want? I mean, the things should be over, though. This should be, have, be, have be a, you know, a non-issue by the end of the day, hopefully. But I think, well, one, of the things, I think one of the things they're trying to do is, is confuse the two. Um, it, it, it's, it's a lot. Everybody should kind of be focused. You know, hopefully folks in Georgia will focus on, on the job they have to do there. And this, this, uh, this frivolous uh, action by um, Ken Paxson in Texas is, you know, like, like Trump has shown throughout, you know, his time in, in, in office has been to take attention from what's really going on. To, to, to come at you with some, you know, dazzling sleight of hand, and and Kim Paxson is 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 cut from the Trump cloth. I mean, he's involved in in numerous uh, 
law uh, law actions in Texas. He's already shown that he doesn't have any problem breaking the rules. Uh, under Texas, isn't he under investigation? Enterprise. He's already been indicted in Texas on on numerous exactly. different charges. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, this guy. Yeah. His inner circle, his inner circle turned against him and and brought charges against him, complaints and formal charges against him. And these are the people that he hired that he felt was close to him. Where have we heard that before? You know, <laughs> your inner circle turned against you because you know it's it's just it's yeah, frivolous, sure. it's nonsensical. It's it's uh he's desperate. This is some last grasp. Uh, yeah, uh, just want to let go. The actions, of course not. And and mm-hmm. you know, at a time when we should be focused on finishing this off in Georgia, Georgia right. should be focused on finishing this off. And but no, right. this this. Well, didn't they already said they wasn't going to you know continue with it, Georgia already? I mean, come I, on. I mean, no, I mean, Georgia has to go through with their yeah, they got yeah. With their election, mm-hmm. I mean, this is you know mm-hmm. that the balance of what's what's going on in Congress is on the line. And to to uh, right. your point earlier, Walt, I do think this is seditious. This is treasonous. This is mutinous. Yeah, absolutely. It's no different. Absolutely. It's no different yeah. than the Civil War. I, and that's right. you know my problem I have with with people that embrace the Confederacy. You're embracing mutinous action, seditious action. So you know it, it's it's so in order for you. To, to uphold your your heritage, you got to go back to things that were criminal, you know. So as far as I'm concerned, anybody that that's of this cloth that defends this, and just like you know, defending you know Trump's administration over the last four years, uh, if you defend anything that that supports this man that's against the Constitution, then you're you're seditious to me. In my eye, this is criminal. This is against the Constitution. So you're against. What right. should be the normal way of life here? And, and we got no choice but to be against that. Right, definitely. Very true. And Very if true. you're a Republican that won your election, you should be angry as well. Absolutely. If you won your election down, down ballot, this guy is saying, because I didn't win, the election is fraudulent. Well, they should try. You know, they should, yeah, they should forfeit. That. They so, should be speaking up as well. Yeah, it, right. it, it invalidates their win. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. He just yeah. can't take the fact that the rest of the country said we're going to be okay with the rest of the Republicans down ballot, but we're ref- we we're refuting you. We don't want you, and he can't take that. That's exactly. the problem. And what blows exactly. my mind is how they'll stand by in this foolishness. Yes. So if we support the president, that invalidates, you know, what, what I accomplished. And we're OK, exactly. with it, which is ridiculous that you've got to be brainless exactly. to, to 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 go behind an enterprise like that. Well, yeah. and I got a comment that uh, the Supreme Court would see right through this uh, coming from Mark. 2982, uh, which is my boss, Marjorie. But yeah, I, yeah, I, I hope they do. And it's just that it's just not over yet. You know, no announcement has been made. So, uh, you know, everything is, uh, I believe it when I see it. That's basically it. And going back to the uh, Georgia elections, uh, I understand. And unfortunately, we, we, don't, we don't have Stephen, who, who's uh, from Atlanta. To give us a little bit, a little bit more on the ground uh, view of what's going on in Georgia, but I understand that they they're trying to they close down some of the mail about the drop boxes and whatever they can do to try to suppress the turnout uh, for mail in voting and early voting and, and things of that nature. Has anyone heard anything about how they're doing down in uh, Georgia? Yeah, so. There's a um, there's a group that I'm a part of called Transformative Justice Coalition, um, who have some some ground uh, troops down there. Uh, so they try to do they reduce it, they reduce four uh, drop box in in uh, Cobb County and try to do the Cab County as well, um, mm-hmm. which is crazy because those are, those are some of the large larger areas. Um, that have a democratic stronghold uh, when it comes down to it. Um, and one of the things they're actually doing, so since the president actually had tried to, to get the uh, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp to 
um, uh, calling a special session. One thing that Georgia is doing, one, since they have the special election on January 5th, as soon as they open up for their regular session, they're going to try to eliminate um, mail-in ballots uh, for no reason. Like everything has to be like specifically strict reasons. They're going to try to take away drop boxes and everything else to specifically try to hurt any uh, Democratic uh, or Democrat from, from being able to vote any other way other than going to the poll even amongst the current pandemic that is still going to be existing in January. Yeah, and, and worse, and worse. Absolutely. I believe there was okay. a, move, a okay. move in Georgia by the, by the Georgia Republicans to reduce the amount of early, um, early voting mm -hmm. sites from 11 to 5. I don't know whether that was successful yeah. or not. Yeah, 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 I yeah. heard that. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, Greg, so you're right. So what no, what it was is that so it's during the operating hours of the uh board of elections, um, which would re which would re uh reduce weekend voting. So if you could only vote between nine and five, or if it was you know, whichever time that, that they had designated, right? And you work in between those hours, where well, you would not be able to do early voting, which started which starts on Monday, I believe. Um, and ma mail, they, you were able to do your mail-in ballot to work in the me, and the early voting starts on Monday. And if you can only operate during the, those times, and, and they eliminate it on Saturday and Sunday because the Board of Operations doesn't operate on the weekend, then you're, you're, you're reducing down. They're definitely targeting uh, Democrat voters. Yeah, yeah, the low income, and, the working, the working yeah. people, yes, definitely, you are. Yeah. Yes. And, and they've also been targeting Warnock more than the, 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 the other gentleman that's running. In John Ossoff. Yes, yes. Warnock has been really, they've been going after him relentlessly with some ugly stuff. And, they're make, you know, they're, they're dividing this, these elections and this co country down racial lines. You know, every state that that's in question with Trump it's all in, in, in urban districts, urban areas. It, it just no secret to this, what they're doing. It's, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, but Chris, I, I think it supersedes racial because, you know, you already, oh, you've always had Democrat and Republican. All right. So, I mean, for us to be 50 50, uh, a split country down the middle, that encompasses all people, black, white, you know, that are, that are Democrat. Yes, so but. It's not yeah. But what, what's in question when they go to court are these urban districts, the areas that oh, okay. clearly... Okay, I see the caveat. Okay, I got you. I got you. It, it's, it's not happening in Idaho. It's happening in Philadelphia. It's happening in Atlanta. It's happening in certain districts, in Houston. There's certain places that... Right, Detroit. It's certain places that they're calling out because they need something... We know it's not based on race, but they need it to appear that way so people can be angry at something. Somebody, they need a face to say, these are the people and they are the reasons why he's not president right now. Mm, okay, 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 I agree with you. Uh, anybody else want to contribute? Uh, yeah, one? this is yeah. just another way to disenfranchise um, black and brown people from voting um, to say that. You know, um, you know, Biden couldn't have possibly won this many black and brown people couldn't have possibly voted um, for for Biden. But they did. And it's not so much that they voted for Biden as opposed to them voting against Trump. I mean, I would have voted for for, you know, Snoopy. Um, <laughs> he was running against Just Trump. Get Trump out. Yeah, yeah it was against <laughs> Trump. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's. I was, yeah. I was kind of pushing for Snoopy to run. <laughs> <laughs> Not Snoop, but Snoopy. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's it. We can say that you know, it's not about um, race, but it really is because in in less than. Uh, 20, 25 years, this country is going to be 
almost 50 percent uh minority majority so well, that's, 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 that's what that's the underlying yeah right. i agree with you I agree. yeah that's what they, they're, they're looking they're looking down the road. They're looking at now, but they're looking down the road to change these laws so that, mm-hmm. you know, black and brown people can be disenfranchised. Yeah, you know? and they could keep their majority. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is the fear. That's that's, right. the, that's the great that, that's the underlying current that carries mm-hmm. all over the black planet. Yeah, sure. Black right? planet, definitely. I see yeah. Jean joined in. Um Jean, if you could call in if you can, if you're in a decent area with a uh, good connection, you can call in. All right. So, uh, Walter, you can continue. Yeah. 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 But that, you know, that that is something that I've known from, you know, the time Trump became president is that that fear of uh, losing the majority is it's something that they were, you know, people worry about. Some people say, no, I don't want to be the minority anymore. You know, I don't want to be the minority. I'm we're the majority. This is a white country. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. All right, before we move on, uh, are there any more uh, comments, Greg? Ernest? I just, Ernest, I just, anything? yeah, this is Monique. I just, I want to point out something because it, I don't know why it um, resonated with me so much, but, and I, I posted it on Facebook that they were really disenfranchising um, Native Americans so that if they didn't have, quote unquote, the proper address, that they couldn't vote. Right. That we know, uh, you know, a lot of Americans live on reservations Mm -hmm. and um, they didn't deem them to be, you know, voting eligible and they were trying to disenfranchise them. And Mm -hmm. that bothered me so much. And I'm like, if you can disenfranchise the original people of this country, what can you Mm -hmm. do to anybody else? Right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, so we That's need it. to we need to not only fight for us, but we need to fight for them as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because they're not considered yeah. citizens, you know. So definitely, I mean, uh, the American Indian. I mean, coming from North right. Carolina, a lot of us, you know, we we could probably trace a little bit. I mean, even though a lot of people mm-hmm. say that, that's BS, you know, you just want to say that, you know. But uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I I agree. With you. I agree with you. I agree with you, Monique. Okay, uh, I was trying to get Gene in, Michelle. Uh, mm-hmm. I clicked on him and dropped again. You okay, may so we're going to move on. Okay. That's okay. Mm-hmm. All right, now I, I do want to talk a little bit about the NFAC. It's going to be a different, we're going to wait for another show because the leader of the NFAC, not effing uh, uh, you know, accepting coalition, all right, it's a it's a black militia group uh, consisting right. of women and men. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, they're armed just like you know, just like these guys when they, they went to um, Charles uh, or Char- Charleston or uh, whatever Charlottesville. Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. we well, carry these automatic weapons, so you got a black militia that does the same. Okay, right. and the uh, leader uh, John Fitzgerald Johnson uh, was arrested because uh, apparently. The FBI said that the reflection, they were on the roof, all right, and the reflection from his, from his weapon, they saw on them. So he must have been aiming his rifle at them, all right. Mm-hmm. They're, on a, they're, they're on a, they're, they're an elevated mm-hmm. level, and they're saying, okay, yeah, he, he, he was pointing his weapon at us. So they want to try to give a guy 20 years. So they arrested him. He was the leader of the group. So... I want to get more information because I couldn't get anything additional prior to the show. Okay. Uh, in terms of the developments of the case, whether he's, uh, he's been let, you know, on parole or whatever, but I couldn't get it. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're going to save that. All right, Jane. Hey, what's going on? Hi. How you doing? Yeah, Gene. Uh, you want to introduce Gene, Michelle? Cause you can do, he's, he's one of our, our very, uh, important uh, panel member? Yes, yes. That's Gene Edwards, male district leader, 79th Assembly District out of the Bronx, New York. Welcome, Gene. Thank you, Gene. Oh, thank Good you. to have you again, hey, brother. Hey, family. Uh, I, can- I finally figured out the uh, connection. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, Gene, I, I, we were talking. Yeah, go ahead. I, was, I, I, was, I spoke to Walter a couple of days ago, and I told him I'm back at work. Uh, I work in the mm-hmm. afternoons and the evenings, so 
I never know what time I'm gonna get off. Well, we get appreciate off. you coming on, definitely. Yeah, thank we you. We definitely appreciate it. So, Walter, you can um, fill Gene in, you know, yeah, or Jane. just go to the next question or whatever you want to choose to do. Yeah, I, I, uh, Gene, we were talking about the Supreme Court, uh, Texas, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. taking the four states to the Supreme Court. Uh, we were talking about that. Uh, I don't know whether you want to contribute to that because, you know, we think that it should just, you, you know, Supreme Court should even hear it, you know, based on what they're presenting. Time that a, that a case was presented to the Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court, I believe it was uh, right. either Pennsylvania or Arizona, uh, you had at least three justices that didn't even give a dissent. Like, they thought so narrowly of it that they didn't even bother to write a dissent or give any kind of decision. Like, to them, it was just a bunch of malarkey. And I think you're going to see the same thing once Texas wow. tries to uh, make the presentation. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we concluded as much, but it's not over until it's over. That's why we're a little, I'm a little stressed. I was telling everybody, Jane. Until I can, yeah. I see their whatever they're gonna, get, you know, recommend or whatever their findings are. It's it's over because what I found was a insult to injury is that the uh, three Supreme Court justices that didn't give dissent were the three uh, judges that were appointed by President Trump. So he can't even get his own people to help him out. Ah, oh, okay. All right. Supreme, the, the, Supreme, the Supreme Court rejects uh, Texas and Trump's debate to overturn the election. All oh, right. That you, I hear you have a great news. Great news. You heard it here first, guys. If you're not tuned in to the TV, Supreme Court just rejected uh, Texas. Yeah, I was listening to that. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering who it was. It's rejected. Thank all you, right. Lord. Yeah, all right, guys. You can relax now, Walter. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me come back. All right. If, if, clap, if this, clap. Give it a clap. Where the props at, brother? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Yeah, oh. that's right. All right. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to the I got to go back to business. If this, if this yes. Is I'm joining the Walt Back Weekly. To please follow, <laughs> like, and share. Please follow, like, and share the Walt Weekly. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Lord. But anyway, that's over. No that's more. Right. I don't have to have this guy on the agenda. All right. Good. good. He's going to come up with something else. Yeah. yeah, wow. we'll, we'll, dismiss, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll dismiss that just like we, yeah, we you know, dismiss yeah. Giuliani's foolishness and, oh, and boy. Not this foolishness. So it just. Two it's clowns. It's, it, yeah, exactly. It really is. Exactly what it is. All right. You know, for him, it's it's about to uh, making mm -hmm. as much money as he possibly can. Oh yeah. So that he can do with it what he wants to once he's out of office, and he's going to need a lot of mm -hmm. that money to, you know, to pay his attorneys for all these lawsuits that he. Oh put yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he won't pay. Him. Like he doesn't pay anybody else. I'm sorry. He ain't gonna, he's not going to pay them, just like he doesn't pay anybody else. <laughs> so he's gonna pay Giuliani. <laughs> yeah, well, twenty thousand. Yeah, his, he wants twenty thousand dollars a day, right? It's probably yeah, favorite hit favors from the eighties for him. The old favors, all the dirty well, work you know they've been doing. He, Giuliani has probably got something on him, you know. Right? Come on. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. He used to be the AG. Yeah. I mean, for the southern. Mm -hmm. right? so, they go way back. I mean, not not only is the country split in half, so is Giuliani's. Um, children. The the son works at the White House. The Ooh. daughter can't stand Giuliani and oh, his wow. politics, and she's been that way since a teenager. If you go back and uh, and and look at the mm -hmm. newsreels, you'll find that she spoke up against her father years ago. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know what, you know what mm. sister? You're right because uh, about five years ago there was a big story where his daughter had walked into a store. And she was arrested for shoplifting. Mm. I wow. think that was just wow. to, I think that was just to make her dad look bad. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of discontent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. She's spoken remember. up. She's spoken out against her dad on several occasions. Yeah, well, you got to remember, you know what he did to her mother. Oh yeah, that mm, that's right. Yeah. How, oh how yeah. 
how he disrespected his mother, and that's something sure that daughter did. is going to see. So she's sure going to carry did. that off. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Announced the divorce at, at a press conference, and she didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember yeah. that. that. Yeah, I remember did that. Did a dirty. Did a dirty. Birds yeah. of a feather. Crazy. Right. Well, we got, wow. well, 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 we have Jean on the phone. I want to move over to COVID now uh, with the vaccines. Jean, are you getting any type of uh, preliminary or uh, upfront information in terms of how mm-hmm. the distribution is going to work of the vaccine in New York? Mm-hmm. No, I'm just I'm just waiting and watching uh like everyone else. Uh I understand there's gonna be one hundred and seventy five thousand doses uh that's gonna get delivered to New York and the uh first uh uh scale of uh vaccine is gonna go to frontline workers and mm-hmm. uh you know, the uh, old folks at the nursing home. Um for right. lack of a better term. Um I think that's like a band-aid on a bullet wound when you mm-hmm. live in a city with 10 million people. What is oh, yeah. 185,000 going to do? That's not even, you know, mm-hmm. that's, that's not even 1% of the city. And and all of the frontline workers and um, it's, it's uh, elderly. Um, but what I can tell you is that the pushback I'm getting from the black community is, uh, you know, we have suffered from medical apartheid in this country and to a lot of black people middle aged and older this might as well be the Tuskegee experiment you know mm. why, you, why is that because you watch the news and you say you know you are <laughs> the governor and the mayor of new york city and new york state talk about how the black and brown community is affected the most well, right. knowing that, knowing that, how come you all didn't act faster mm-hmm. in the black and brown mm-hmm. and low income communities when COVID was when COVID hit? Mm-hmm. You didn't act, yep. you know. And then maybe you want to use us as like lab lab rat, you know? Um, right. No, 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 no. A lot of people are going to push back. So I, I think that it, um, what, what I can conclude from what you said is that you're not going to take the vaccine then uh, when it gets you <laughs> right? Well, Walter, you already confirmed that you're taking one for the team, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get we're gonna James We're going to wait for you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gene, Gene. All right, love, we love you, Gene. Hopefully you'll you dial back in. All right, but since we're on COVID, which is the big topic. I mean, that's, that's more important than anything right now because people are dying. Right. Uh, we're up to 1.7 million infections and, mm. you know, and uh, over three over 3,000 deaths a day. And, you know, it's always been, you know, looking at it based on the information that, I, that I've seen, that I've heard, and, you know, everybody follow this. You know, I'm, I'm at an age where I got grandkids and, you know, I got some two little granddaughters I can't even hug. I haven't hugged them since, like, March. You know, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, if it takes a shot, you know, the, the, it's better. I, if I can hug my granddaughter, I got to take a shot, I'll take a shot, my wife and I. We've, we've decided. Our decision is made when it comes to our return. All right. But, you know, with all those types of deaths and with minorities uh, being affected more, you know, not just Blacks, Indians, Latinos, Hispanics, you know. Why wouldn't you take the shot? Uh, you know, and uh, I don't understand why you wouldn't take the shot. All right. So I'm just going to go with panel members here. I'm going to turn it over to them. I know what they told me. I'm going to take one for the team. So Monique, what about you? Will you take the shot? Um, I will, but I'm going to wait and see. <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame you. Uh, if you're in that position, yes. I got I'm going to wait. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, wait and see. Okay. Jane? I'm going to be amongst the last to take the vaccine. Oh, okay. All right. Good enough. Good enough. I'm with you on that one. Me too. All right. Uh, Greg, what about you? All right. I told. I don't know if I told this story before, but I'm a little traumatized by vaccines. Um, being a, uh, in the military, and I can remember when, you know, the worst thing on the horizon was anthrax. And the military made us take a series of six vaccines. 
and he had to. This was life and death. And, you know, they faced a lot of resistance in the military. And, you know, I all along, I felt that, you know, they don't have a problem using the military as lab rat. And that's exactly what we were, because midway through this absolutely urgent vaccine, they stopped it. So I took the first three series and then they said, well, we're not doing it anymore. Well, what happened to the urgency? Like we had to take Mm. this. And so, you know, who knows 20 years down the line, you know, what effect those first three in the series, the anthrax series are going to have on me. So I'm, I'm almost like I'm not, you know, convinced, totally convinced that I'm not going to take this. But right now I'm, I'm leaning towards uh, wait and see. We're going to, you know, right. just wait a month to Ernest, see how things go before I. Yeah, Ernest, take Ernest was talking about that before with the vaccines, too. Go ahead, Gene. Okay. I'm sorry. OK, so yeah, that just um, that just has me a little skeptical. Yeah, uh, great. Greg brings up a, a, a very interesting point in that uh, I had to take those shots also, brother. And uh, I was in the Navy, so I was on the ship, and we were 100 miles off the coast of nowhere. So I couldn't even jump off the ship. So I, had to, I had to take that. And, and, yeah, yeah. And I recall there was a, uh, a, a shipmate of mine. He was Puerto Rican. He was, he was from Chicago. And he used to do that Santeria stuff. And he said he did Santeria, and Santeria told him not to do it. But he couldn't do anything about it. Because like I said, we're 100 miles off the coast of nowhere. So we took the shot. Mm. But the reason why I said that Greg brought up a very interesting uh, topic is that why do they want to give it to frontline workers and the elderly first? Everything goes through the military first. Why are right. they trying to vaccinate the Army and the Marine Corps and the Navy and the Air Force? Because we're not going to say no because we're trained to take orders. They're yeah. trying to vaccinate the military. So what is this about the vaccine that you won't vaccinate the men and women that have sworn to serve and protect? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, right. Ernest, you want to fill in for that one? Yeah, I, I can't necessarily answer the question as far as what, what Gina said, as far as why they mm-hmm. wouldn't do the military first. It, it, I mean, one, I think that the number would be just too, it's too much because, it, I mean, you got boot camps, you have all these, you know, military ser- service members who are all over the, all over the country, all over the world. I mean, I, I just think it would be too much. but. To answer Walt's question, um, I will also uh, probably. Hello. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening. Yeah. Oh no, I had, I had some interference. Um, I will also defer um, to allow for everyone else to to go before I. Um, <laughs> and but I mean, but reason being is that I mean, I, I, I too, I've taken anthrax, I've taken smallpox, um, a ser- series of those shots. Um, and the thing is, is that we don't know the long-term ramifications of one, the infection of COVID, two, the efficacy or the any of the effects as it pertains to the vaccines. Right. Um, so, I mean, so to, to a point, yes, they can mitigate. Uh, it, it, they can mitigate the contraction or the um, the potential transmission okay. of COVID. Um, but don't know, you know, what other effects does that have? Historically, there have been, um, you know, vaccines or pills or, or all types of, you know, whatever Mm -hmm. that has caused sterilization in both men and women. Right. Um, and so, you know, and, and then like, there's, there's no studies as, as it pertains right now for, for women who are pregnant, Mm -hmm. uh, for children under the age of 16. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and that, so that that's a large number. So then now you you get the vaccination, you know, as a man or a woman, does that prevent you from being able to have children? Or right. you know, what happens to the child if the child comes to term? So there's a lot of things that are are missing from this. And so with the with the rapid succession, I mean, or rapid uh, 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 manufacturing of this particular vaccination. 
Um, I think there are some there's some outstanding questions that I think that should be answered. Okay. okay. Yeah, wow. that's definitely. All right, just, just well, yeah. I didn't I didn't answer the question. Yeah, go ahead. I'm not taking it. I think I. You, I'm not interested. You're in not it. interested in it? Okay. Uh, no. But I, I do want to say that we lost a, 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 a great actor today, Tiny Debo. Oh, yeah. 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 62 years old. Complications of COVID. So yeah. that kind of makes me nervous, but I'm kind of hoping. I'm glad I'm retired from the city of New York because, you know, they might be trying to, you know, force them to take those those shots. I, I really, I don't want to take it at all. I'm not interested. Yeah, but, but they, they, they wouldn't force you to take the shot. Would they They'll just force you to take, take the test? No, but they would, they would strong. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think they could force them, but it, it would be an okay. issue because I think um, the... Uh, they're still suffering, you know. There's, there's still, people are still coming down with it, you know. And you know, it's, it's, it's a big issue for them. You work for the city, you work in the public, yeah, with yeah. the public. You got to be yeah, out there. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, like if I was still working, it might be something that I would think about because I got to be around people. Like you got to be out there. So, I'm glad I'm not in that position. Because I really don't want to take the, the vaccine. And I think I had COVID last year, so I'm thinking maybe I built up the antibodies. I'm I'm just convincing myself of that. Are you gonna take the antibodies? I don't test? want to take. You can take a test to determine whether you got uh, it. Yes, I, I actually, I actually just took a test uh, the other day. I'm waiting for my results. Okay. So we'll see how it all goes. All right, Chris. All right, I hear you, man. I got to give you something for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, uh, going back, I want, I want to talk about that now. All right. I think that uh, that's close to home. And what I can't understand is the, the bar owner, the owner of the bar in Staten Island, and he was open and he keep resisting the uh, restrictions. All right. He took, he was driving his car. They were, the car, police were chasing him. And one of the cops were on his hood, and he went 100 yards with a cop on his hood and one running down beside him. To me, if that was a black person, he would have been shot. I would like to know why this guy is still walking around. Dead on the spot. He wouldn't have been able to he take a He got the complexion for the protection, like Paul Mooney says. Come on, we all know there why. Go. He got there off and got, he got go. bailed. Come on. Yep. Yeah, he got bailed. He ran over the cop. Ran him over. Yeah, put him in the hospital, right? Yeah, he would have been shot dead. Right, if, if he would have turned, if he would, even if he would have turned to try and run, he would have been shot on the spot. Like exactly okay. in the back. In the back, he gets to run to his car, start it up, and run these people over. Like, mm-hmm. now that only goes. I mean, I think that's a segue into what I'm about to say now. All right, there. If 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 y'all got, if you're white. And you don't understand why we complain about, you know, police brutality and this and that. That right there is a good example of the difference that we are treated versus what a white person would be treated. There could be no further evidence. I mean, that's up close. That's right in your face, basically. But you're coming from it from a reasonable point of view. And, you know, but the thing of it is, they would have to first acknowledge that there is a problem with um, black people being discriminated against you know if you don't um, if you don't um understand that there's a problem then you're not going to understand the correlation between the two mm-hmm. you know you have to acknowledge it first mm-hmm. and if you yeah, can't understand that then but then know. it's a refusal now, that's why i said mm-hmm. that's an example that's a that's a, that's up close and personal yeah that, that's a vivid example of, mm-hmm. of the different difference in treatment of uh, white versus black, but right, we can right, see that the, because we understand the discrimination, but they don't. Right, but we. But the thing is that that needs to be clear is that when you're framing it, is that we're not framing it in such a way that that we uh, believe that the person should be shot. We believe that we should be afforded the same latitude. Sure. And the uh, and, and right and the ability not to be killed 
for sure. it to be, you know, for it to, you are right. No, but not, but no, no, no. I, I, I know we agree to that, but I'm saying just for those who are listening that may right. catch a piece of it is that no, no one's suggesting that they get worse treatment or treatment like right. African Americans or black people, but that we should all be treated equally, equally. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and given the opportunity for the, 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 uh, for the situation to be resolved in a peaceful manner. Or but you the have to right, right. But you have to understand is we're not cons- we're still not considered equal absolutely, in their yeah. eyes. No, we're absolutely. still considered less than, so they're not going to see that. You have to acknowledge first that we're equal. If you acknowledge that we're equal, then you can try and um, assess the situation mm-hmm. and say, okay, well maybe they are treated differently than right. we are. But if you're if you're telling some if you if you believe that somebody's not equal to you or that they're not um, they they shouldn't be afforded the same opportunities as you. Then you right. know, right. yeah, okay. It, it's about it's it, about acknowledgement, and you can't acknowledge something that you don't believe. Well, the thing is, it also is it tells them. us. I mean, I think the thing is, is, is to educate people that everybody is the same, right? I think that's what we're right. But that's not our responsibility. We've been doing that for over four hundred years, and I'm not trying to teach white people that I'm 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 equal to them. I'm I'm tired. Right. I'm tired. Right. White people got to step up and 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 teach each other. Okay. You know, if you have questions, I'll answer them. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. one it, it, it's crazy because one of my white friends told me one time we were talking about politics and things like that. She says, you know. You're really kind of conservative. She said, you're more white than I am. I said, no. I said, let me make this clear. I said, black people in this country have pretty much always been conservative. I said, it's the media and society that has deemed us, um, you know, loose, immoral, amoral, and all these other adjectives you can describe um, for um, um, mm-hmm. black people. So I said, it's not that I'm whiter than you. I just, I just, I grew up with a set of, of, of morals and principles passed down to me by generations of my ancestors. And, you know, I believe what I believe based upon, you know, my life, my experiences and what was taught to me. So it has nothing to do with me. I said, I can never be whiter than you because I can never be white. Right. That's right. I agree. Mm-hmm. G, That's what, right. what mm-hmm. happened? What happened in, in Staten Island also shows you how divided people are on this COVID thing. Like, they are just going to the extremes, and so many people just do not believe that it's, some, that it's a thing. Right. Yeah, I'm, get, I'm getting that back. They don't believe, right. They don't believe it. They don't they believe, don't believe and COVID they're privilege is real. And privilege, and the fact that Staten Island has a lot of mom and pop stores. They depend on their businesses to keep their families going. But your risk, this, this particular bar, it was not the first time. They've had warnings. They've had warnings because they're mm-hmm. always overcrowded. You know, they're not obeying the law with social distancing and masks. So that's why they got closed down. But because they're privileged, they were out there protesting, you know, to have this bar open because it's one of their favorite places that these white people attend. You know, it's like a regular thing for them. So they're like, well, you know, at one point, even Cuomo had stated that who the hell does Staten Island think they are? When they did the sh- the lockdown, Staten Island was still open. It was still open. So they feel like, well, you don't treat us like we're part of the city because we're still paying the damn toll and we're part of New York. You don't treat us like we're part of New York, so we don't have to obey the laws like like uh, the other boroughs. So they, they actually feel like they're privileged. This is on, uh, you know, the other side of Staten Island. It's not near me, but a lot of those areas out here, they pretty much do what they want to do, you know, and unfortunately, you know, they, they had that, that, that big rally, you know, and then this guy gets arrested for running over the, the, the police. I mean, that, that's just, boldness like how do you think that you could just run somebody over walk a- run away from them do what you want keep your bar open and say screw the law like who does that i mean that no that's trump country anyway right yeah it, it's, it's trump country yeah yeah very so, conservative uh, yeah i'm I'm, in, I'm inclined i mean monique you know i we think a lot alike uh in terms of you know 
of, of how white people respond. And, and but, you know, we got to find a way to correct the situation. You know, it's it's you know, it's something that we just have to do. All right. And I think that that's a, just a good example of what a white person can get away with versus a black person. So I did want to call that out. All right. right. Yeah, the only thing I can do is be an example for myself and hopefully for my people by being um, being aware, being woke, and, and being intelligent. Exactly. Um, right. And if that's not enough for them, that's their problem. Mm -hmm. It's not mine. Right. 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 You know, and I've always, I, I've always said that. And, you know, I've always been considered a rabble rouser, a troublemaker. Um, you know, especially at work because I'm, I was very vocal and I've always spoken mm -hmm. up. Um, so, you know, like I said, it's, you know, I tell my white friends, it's up to you all based upon your relationships with your black friends to educate your white people. I said, the, now the, the, now their friends, they have limited access to black and brown people and that's their choice. You know, that's why a lot of this country is so divided because, you know, we grew up, we had to be around white people, whether it was school, business or whatever, but they have, they pretty much have a choice. They don't have to be around us, especially after hours. They may have to be around us during working hours, but you know, how, how many black people do they actually invite over for dinner? How many birthday parties or christenings or whatever? Do they come to for black well, people? You know, you know what they say. They so got that one it's, black it's, friend. You know, they got that one black friend. Yeah, well, that, you know. It. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, that's, that's funny. That is true. Because me and Lau went to a wedding uh, New Year's Eve the day after. And we're looking around. And I'm like, holy shit. We're the only blacks. It had to be like a 200 people, white people. And then mm -hmm. I turned around. I was like, oh, there's a brother. Then I said, nah, he's not a brother. He's with a white girl. Like, it's true. <laughs> well, no, he's a brother. Brother. He's still a brother. That was his bro. choice. Yeah. Nope. I was like, uh-uh. Nope. I mean, nope. He said it. Nope. I, I didn't consider. I was like, <laughs> wow. nah, we the only black ones here. Sorry. That's man. another show. Wow. That's another show. That's another show. Yeah, that's another show. Yeah. 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 But he's still, he's still black. Right. He has his right to his choice. He didn't even look yeah, our way. Exactly. I was like, he's yeah. too scared to even look over here. He wouldn't even look at us. I was like, nah, he can't. He, he's I, he's well, listen, maybe that says uh, more about him than it than it about you all because maybe yeah. he felt some kind of shame that he couldn't <laughs> yeah. look you in the eye. You know what right. I mean? Right. So, I mean, uh, I'm, I don't look, know. let me just give you an example. I enjoyed I, it. I enjoyed being the only black guy. Right, can so I say? Cool can I say? Go ahead. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being in Japan, okay, working there for a year or so, okay, and then going back on vacation and stuff is, right. you know, you you see when you see it when as a black guy and I see another black guy, I saw one black guy from IBM. All right, automatically we we get a head nod that we do. When when black people get into a situation where they're the only just very very few black, they right. acknowledge the yeah. other blacks that are near them. That they see. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so that head nod that you see yeah. is what we do. We're glad to see each other. We're so happy, but you don't see them. So you have been in situations like that. Okay, I get that to do that a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, so, so the South is different. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I I. Uh, I, you know, I, I've come to learn and, and have confidence and I've you know, been, been working in places where I'm the only black guy in the room. OK, running meetings where, you know, I'm the only I'm, I'm, I'm chairing a meeting of all white Indian and Chinese or whatever people. But I'm the only black guy and it's global. So, I mean, those things don't bother me. I grew up where I didn't have to see white people. I saw white people when we integrated the school. Prior to that, I didn't have to deal with them. You know, no more than, you know, the guy come and he delivers soda because we had a grocery store because most black people back then had business in the 60s and early 70s. So I was nervous coming to New York because down south, they tell you black, they call you the N-word, I don't like you. And you go back and say, yeah, yeah, see, I don't like you either. And that was it. So you knew where everybody's right. Mm -hmm. That's not my dog. All right. That's somebody's dog. That's mine. That's mine. Sorry. <laughs> All right. I'm off the hook oh, anyway, this time. No, 
Yeah, you're right, Walter, because my mom from the South, she said they were in segregated schools. She had a great education. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, keeping them separate was, uh, it was a thing, and they had to be in before seven, you know, before nightfall. But she never dealt with any of the, the races. We don't live in... Jane, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have any comments? Anything you want to leave with us? Because we're going to be closing the show pretty soon. Yeah, I want everybody to stay uh, safe with COVID. Uh, the uh, numbers are spiking in New York. The governor was on television today. And so was the mayor. You know, they're starting to shut things down slowly. Right. Uh, and unfortunately, but we knew this was coming. So, uh, right. Be smart about Christmas and New Year's. Be smart. You know? Right. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. Uh, you know, if you're going to go to a gathering, make sure it's a small gathering. And, you know, uh, they have home test kits that they're using in California. And I'm wondering mm. if those home test kits are available in New York. Or so you may want to Google that. Home oh, really? test kits. For COVID, yes, yes. I saw it on uh on Good Morning America. Somebody got mm -hmm. Diana Ross singing in the background. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm getting a lot of background noise. Everybody go on mute. Except Not me. me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody just muted. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Thank you. Uh. Yeah. Uh. It was a a, a young sister. Uh, she's a doctor in Los Angeles, and she was talking about the uh, home test kit that people can get for free in California, because uh, California is where New York was in April. That's how bad it is out there. And um, so th that whole state is shut down. But uh, Dr. Fauci is saying after the holidays, we're going to see a surge in the numbers. So I just you know, ask people to uh, wow. just be responsible and um, try to be smart about you know, this, this holiday season. I know it's 2020. Everybody have plans. Trust me. This holiday will be wants... back again next year. It's not like they're going to miss anything. Right. <laughs> and here's the thing. If, if, if nobody else on this panel was affected by COVID, trust me, it is me. Because this year, I turned 50. And my birthday, mm -hmm. is, March, my birthday is March 17th. And the mayor and the governor shut down New York City at 6 p.m. On they March sure 15th. did. They shut it down the day before my 50th birthday. And when I think in retrospect, out of all the things I would do for my 50th birthday, mm -hmm. staying at home alone was not it a was not one of them. <laughs> <At all. laughs> yeah, it's true. Okay, okay. So if I could spend my 50th with my dog in the house, watching him walk and back and say, forth and, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, bark at the sky, then uh, you can miss Christmas and New Year's. There you okay. go. All right. That's right. Thank you. That's right. Thank you, Honorable. Right. All right. Okay. So anyway, Greg, you there? All right, yes, sir, Chris. I'm still here. I'm still here. All right. So any any words that uh, you know we're gonna be signing off pretty soon. I think we had a great show, you know. And uh I figured that y'all guys want to say something to the audience. This would be the first time that we yeah, do this. Uh, I, I just I, I just want to tell everybody, just to piggyback on Gene, we got to be safe out there and just keep it small for Christmas. You know, you got your, your, your for those who do have family members with them, keep it as small as possible. And, you know, Zoom is available, uh, right. FaceTime, all those things are available. We can still be with each other. You can still give that Christmas shout out to your family members. You can see them face to face and tell them that you love them through the video. All right. All right. All right, Monique. Um, my take on the holidays is a little different because I don't celebrate Christmas in a secular way. Okay. Um, to me, Christmas is about celebrating the birth of Christ and not each other. Um, mm -hmm. so I think that all year long we should give to each other and we shouldn't wait for one, um, 
designated day to to be with family. We can do that at any time. Um, you know, other than, you know, having this pan, um, pandemic. So we shouldn't so much concentrate on, I can't be with my family on this one particular day. Well, this one particular good day, Christmas isn't about you. It's not about presents. It's not about ornaments. It's not about a tree. It's if you're a Christian, that is not it, not anybody. But if you're a Christian, it's about the birth of Christ. And think about right. what you will give to Christ mm -hmm. to honor the birth of of Him. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's my take. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Ernest. Yes. Yeah, um, this, you know, this, the conclusion of the, the Supreme Court case and as we, as we round to the end of the year and looking towards, um, you know, this uh, very, very much different holiday season. Uh, I was watching um, the first night. Um, it's a movie mm -hmm. back in 1995 or whatever case may be uh, with Sean Connery, Richard Gere and it. Uh, but one of the one of the quotes out of there that I want to leave everybody with is may God grant us the wisdom to discover right, the will to choose it and the strength to make it endure. Um, you know, we're I like we're that. Yeah. Pressed up with some some hard things that, that we have to being able to do. Um, so, again, the wisdom to be discover what's right, the will to choose it and the strength to make it endure. So I wish everybody awesome. to be safe. And uh, yes. and and be blessed. Hey, uh, Thank Walter. you. Same to you. Okay. Gene is in there. All right. Gene. Walter, one, one more thing. Uh, once this pandemic is over, and we're all free and clear, we have to get together and have dinner. And uh, dinner, should, dinner should start around six o'clock. I think it's going to last three hours or more. <laughs> <laughs> Because well, we got a chef on here. We got a chef in the house, so maybe we can get him to do Oh, something. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, we, we can all go to Walker's house. Oh, yeah. And Chris, I will cut you a check and donate. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it happen. All right. make make it happen. The audience out there, uh, you know, we, we, That's we, amazing. we work hard to try to, to, to bring information yeah. and heads up to you guys from hey. uh, our perspective, from a black perspective. Uh, that's why the representatives, the panel, and, and the people that we have on the show, you know, they're from the community, and we, and we try to stay on that path. You know, that, that, that's right. our lane. Uh, but I do want to say uh, is that it, 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 we, we, we have a lot of helpless people out there, and this pandemic has, has brought joblessness, mm -hmm. and some people probably want to give up. But as I said last week, don't give up, all right? It, 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 it will change. You just got to find a way to hang in there, all right? Just hang in there. Things right. will change. Take my word for it. I've been through a lot. I've been through the Great Recession. All right, we didn't have COVID. It wasn't bad, but it was as far as working and and you know, I, hey, I've been in close to foreclosure. I paid my mortgage for twenty years straight. Never missed the first day of the month. And then when I got laid off during the Great Recession, I I I, I almost lost my house. So I know how that can be. But I'm, what I'm trying to convey to you guys right. is is just hang in there and 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 we're praying for you guys, and you yes. guys will make it. Just you know, hang in there. All right. Okay. Yeah, Thank survivors. You. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. The Walt Weekly is brought to you by Beauty Blends by Ami and Soap and Love, our, week, our Friday Live sponsors. Discount code The Walt Weekly on their websites. Please follow them, like, and share The Walt Weekly. Thank you to our panel guests, Christopher Sweeney, Ernest J. Robinson. Jean Edwards, Gregory Coleman, and Monique Lord. And wear your mask. Please follow us. And we're, of course, wear your mask. And please follow our, uh, check out our new website, thewaltweekly.com. We can be found on social media, Instagram, The Walt Weekly, and Facebook, The Walt Weekly, and Twitter, Walt Weekly. Thank you all. Be safe. Have a great weekend. God bless. Right. Thank you. Have a nice Good night. Have a great weekend, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Everybody. Same to you.